So hey guys, it's time for another Michi Rambles video. I know, I did back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back art videos, and I'm still trying to find a good rhythm of, you know, evening it out. But another quick thing, still in the middle of a heat wave, so uh, my air conditioning's on auto. So if you randomly hear just a thumb or a loud noise, that's what that is. Just letting you guys know, because, uh, yeah, I'm uh, not turning my AC off for this. I probably should, but it's not good on my unit, because I don't have central air, because I live in an apartment. All right, so let's just, just get on into it. So today I'm going to talk about how I, Michi, uh, Michi Twisted Disaster, I fight the big sad, or seasonal affective disorder. Now, Technically, I haven't been properly diagnosed by a doctor. I haven't diagnosed with depression before. And, well, before you, I still have it. It doesn't exactly go away. But anyway, <laughs> it's a whole other thing. But with that being said, I've noticed like flows and motions and certain times of year where it tends to hit me personally way, way worse than most people do. I normally do not get it in the winter, actually, which is why I never thought I had it. I would always get it in the summer because I live in Southern California where it can get, it can get up to almost 120 degrees outside. And if you don't have air conditioning or some way to cool down your house or a room of your house, you can get heat stroke. I have gotten, well, no, not my correction, heat exhaustion. I have gotten heat exhaustion just existing during the summer so you don't exactly want to go out and do stuff and so you're stuck inside your house and with how my life was just a little context for the past three years what would happen is uh my husband's family my husband's grandparents they have a house in washington that when it would get pretty much too hot, we always made the jokes that they were like reverse birds. When it would get too hot, they would go to their house in Washington for the summer. And we would often, because we lived in that area, we would wash their house for them. Now, we haven't done it in the past couple years because of uh, our new living situation and where we live now. My husband's work, we couldn't exactly do that because the drive would be too far. But their house is a much older house and they did not have air conditioning. They had a swamp cooler, so we still had something. But I would have moments where my sleep schedule would be completely nocturnal and not by choice. I've always had sleeping issues. I've talked about my insomnia and my sleeping issues before on this channel. But in the summer, I would have to forcibly change it because it would be so hot. My electronics would break. I, and I already have, I don't have the best uh, working equipment that I've openly talked about all the time. You guys hear it all the time. You see it in my streams. But I would have them overheat. It would be too hot. My pets would suffer. It would be very, very bad. And it got to a point where I had to stop bringing my pets over in certain situations and like finding places for them to stay in the summer because it was just too hot. Or we would have to take out the extra money by borrowing my parent. My parents had a portable AC unit and we'd have to put that up for the pets because I have chinchillas and chinchillas, fun fact, are cold climate creatures. And so because of that, they have to stay at a certain temperature or they can get sick and they can die and it is not fun. So because of that, you might be wondering why I'm doing all that, but I would have to force myself to be like, okay, I can only be active at night because even though it's colder, it's not cold. It's like normal temperature, normal temperature for what I'm used to because again, born and raised in California, it's fun talking to my friends in other countries because when they're talking about heat waves and stuff, they're like, oh yeah, it was so hot. It was like 70 degrees and I'm out here like... Remember, Michelle, they don't have air conditioning units. It's not normal. You can't you can't compare your body heat to other people's body heat, especially if they live in, like, really, really cold climates. But anyway, long ramble besides that. The point of it is, because of that, I wouldn't get a lot of sun, and I wouldn't get out a lot, and I wouldn't be able to really leave my house, especially for the area we lived in. Now, obviously, a lot of people right now, what's going on in the world, and the other stuff that's going on in the world that I won't be talking about... God, it's a mess. It's been causing more people to have to stay indoors and have to be away from people. And there's a lot of people now. Okay. I used to consider myself an introvert. I did. But with everything going on, I realized that I do like being around people, just not large crowds, unless I'm with friends. I do like, you know, just having that interaction a little bit, e even if it's like a small limit, same with hanging out with friends or having a fun time. I'll have like my people meter. And then once my people meter has hit its peak, which is pretty low, but I still like hitting it, you know, I'm like, okay, 
time to go home and just not talk to anybody. <laughs> you know, just be my own person. But because of that, you know, I started to learn things and I started to learn things. <laughs> But the summer would always be when I would get seasonal affective disorder the most. It's when I would get the most depressed. I'd get the most upset. It would be hard to do a lot of things. I would feel very lost. I would feel very numb. And I tried talking to doctors. I tried doing stuff like that. But by the time it would always happen because I'm, I wasn't the best in my health. But I, I always like to like wait if things like progress. And then if they get, progress to a certain point, then I like call for help and get a doctor and stuff. But it got to a point where I was talking to a friend of mine and she brought up that, well, if this happens every single year at the same time of year for you, and it's always been like this for as long as you can remember, then there's probably a reason for that. You know, and I was like, huh, you're right. So I wrote down what I write here on my paper. I wrote down five little things. I'm going to go into details about how I fight seasonal affective disorder, big, sad, how I try fighting depression the best I can. Obviously, there isn't really medication on this list. You know, please consult a doctor. I am not a professional in the least. I have taken a few college psychology classes, but it wasn't my major. I just want to say that because I know a lot of people give advice out there. And they don't clarify, and I feel like they should because some people do take advice as, like, fact. And it's not. These are just how I do things. These have helped me, and maybe these things can help you. That's why I'm doing this, because I, I want to give it out there. Because I always said, when I do these kind of things, it's stuff I would have wanted to hear at my time in life. Because it would have, you know, helped me out a bit. So, let's get right into it for that very long intro. So, the first thing I have is get some sunlight and vitamin D. So, what I mean by this is... People need vitamin D. We need it. Biolog biologically, ugh, I can't even say it right. Basic biology says we need at least some vitamin D. You will get sick if you don't. But you can't, you can't, you know, do too much of it because then you can, you can get like poisoning, which is a thing, you know, if you, if you go too much from it. But something that helps me a lot is trying my best. And I have a light sensitivity, so it's always been a double-edged sword for me, but I do my best to try to, at least now with where I am, because I am lucky enough with my pets and my situation that I can have an air conditioner running, and it is a pretty good air conditioner, even if it's a wall unit, but I do my best to wake up in the mornings and I have light in my house. I do, I open up all my blinds, I open up all my windows, natural light is your best friend. Obviously, there are places and situations where you can't have that. There are many things. There's vitamin D pills that you can get at your local drugstore. There's, um, there's, you know, those lamps that people talk about and things like that. Try your best just to get a little bit of sun every day. You don't have to, like I said, because sometimes it's hot. We don't want to just go sit outside and just coax in the sun. But sometimes getting some fresh air and getting out is extremely helpful and it does help me. So doing my best to try to stick to a schedule now where I'm getting at least a little bit of sunlight a day or I'm in a very bright environment that isn't artificial light, it isn't lights. Because another thing, I don't know if anyone else is like this, but I've always been like this. I hate white lights. Like in houses, I, I grew up in a very warm light house. I always have. And I think it's because my dad also has a light sensitivity. Um, and because of that, you know... I always had the like warm yellowy lights in my house, you know, my house is never dark, but it was like that. And so when everybody started moving to like the sterile white fluorescent lights, cause they were, they are cheaper. Like I can't share, they are cheaper to like, you know, use it's why more people are getting them now, but it feels so much more sterile and it doesn't feel right to me. And it doesn't, it just, I'd rather be in the dark at that point. I don't know if other people are like that, but I always have been. So what I'm trying to say is go get some sun. Try to have natural light best you can. Um, if you live in house, I have some friends who they like a very dark house. Their family does. They themselves don't. And they have blackout curtains. Blackout curtains are amazing for when you are trying to sleep. If you're one of those people. But you, you should really keep those open. Because if you live just in total darkness all the time, it's, it's going to start messing with your head. Because it does with me. And so... That's my first thing. Try your best to get some sunlight, even if it's a little bit every day, you know, get out there and try to try to just try to breathe. Try to breathe. All right. 
Number two I have, and it's the, it goes into number one, is try to keep a schedule the best you can. So a lot of people right now are working from home, and a lot of people are still being kept to their same work schedule, so it's, you know, easy. But there's also a lot of people right now who are unemployed. You know, they don't have any kind of schedule. They're sleeping in all the time, they're doing stuff like that, and as someone who's been self-employed, and I have terrible, terrible sleeping problems... It can be hard to keep a schedule, but sometimes, and what I've been doing more recently, is you you gotta power through it. You gotta power through it and fix your sleep schedule. You can't cave and go in. Some days are gonna be so much harder than others, but I find when I keep to a schedule and I keep to a certain wake-up routine that I have, which I, I guess I can I can go over it right now. It doesn't really need a whole video. I'm not gonna have time. I'm not going to time like Lavender Town where I can draw out everything. So my basic like morning routine, finger quote morning routine, is I made a goal to myself that I don't wake up past noon. I don't wake up past noon. I wake up anywhere between nine and noon. That's like my big three hour window. And when I wake up, I give myself a two hour wake up time. What do I mean by a two hour wake up time? So in those two hours, I get all my stuff done and I don't even touch my computer. This also happened because I'm still currently using my old setup. And with my computer, I have to like turn it on. It has to warm up. It has to do a lot of stuff before I can even use it. So I can't even do what I used to do where I'd wake up, turn my stuff off and go to work. No, I have, I have to let it warm up. I have to let it get everything or else I have tablet issues. I have computer issues, stuff freezes and crashes more. It's just better to do it this way. So you should wake up, get out of bed. My big thing, okay is I have to get out of bed because if I am exhausted, unless it's like something woke me up like my cat or something, if I stay in bed, I will stay in bed and I will keep sleeping. And that is a big, big problem. I've always had, I've had that my whole life. And so because of that, I force myself once I wake up to pretty much get out of bed, I grab my stuff and I start my routine. So I either, this will go into another one that I have here that helps a lot. So when I shower, because this is, this is technically number four, and I know I'm bouncing around the list here, but it goes into my morning routine, so it helps. So I do my best to brush my teeth when I shower. That sounds really weird, I know, but brushing my teeth in the shower guarantees that I brush my teeth and I take better care of my health and my body. Because when you get depressed and when you have the big sad, it, uh, hygiene goes out the window. We like to say it doesn't, and we acknowledge that we like smell and we look like crap and that we feel like crap, but we that's how we feel like you kind of don't care anymore like a lot of people make those jokes and those things but you just don't it's it's true like I, I've, I've read people posting about how like when their depression was the worst it had ever been they like went like weeks or months without showering just because they they could barely bring themselves to get out of bed in the morning so doing this has helped me a lot so I do my best to you know do my wake up stuff either wash my face or, you know, take a shower. And if I take a shower, I brush my teeth during the shower because that also guarantees that I brush my teeth the proper two minutes when I'm doing it in the shower because I'm already in there. I'm already doing my shampoo and conditioner and my, like, you know, my, my, my routine, theoretically. And so because of that, what happens is I'm, like, killing two birds with one stone. I'm getting it done and I'm keeping my hygiene, you know, up to date the way I should. Now... I, that being said, I don't take multiple showers in a day unless I've like done a lot of stuff in a day and I feel gross, but I usually do one shower. It's a semi long shower. I like long showers. So, you know, do my hair, wash my hair, blah, 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 brush my teeth, all that crap. And then I, I go on with, with my day. And so with that two hour back to the two hour, like thing for my period, I make sure I eat something or I have a coffee or I drink something and I take that two hours. Usually it's like an hour, but sometimes it dips in the two hours, but I don't make it go past the two hours. I will like, you know, I'll watch something that's like, I want to watch. I don't check my emails. I don't do work. I just talk to my friends. It's me time, pretty much. It's it's not like, oh, I'm in bed and I just, oh, I stay in there for two hours and I watch movies and I just slowly wake up. Some people can do that. I can't. I'm going to fall back asleep. I'm going to be real. I'm going to fall right, the be right back to sleep. It's hard not to say the F word, but I can't because of YouTube's new rules. So I have to really, really try to ground myself the best I can which does suck. But anyway, um, and then keeping that schedule and that routine for me makes me so much more productive. I was getting so much more done, stuff done and I am getting much, a lot more things done than I normally used to. 
and I'm keeping a lot more. If you guys have been stopping in my streams, which by the way, I am doing my best to try to stream more on Twitch on Mondays and Fridays, I believe I put my, in my thing. I don't have a set time, but those are the days I shoot for indefinitely because I don't like streaming on days I have videos. Anyway, but in doing so, I've been able to get a lot more stuff done. I've been able to have more fun and more people can see that even my work, my my workload has been slowly lessening because I have been able to be more productive. And honestly, having that two hour wake up time is really a part of it. And so then during my work day, obviously, it's just going to my schedule being self-employed. I have to set my phone to about two ish hours, maybe two thirty hours, you know, two and a half hours. And then that way I can like, you know, take a quick break from streaming. I'll like, hey, I need to take like a wrist break, stretch, you know, walk around real quick. And I like to go off of the rules that I used to go off of when I worked retail jobs, which was every two hours you get a 15 minute break and every four hours you get a, like an hour, like a 30 minute or an hour lunch, right? So sometimes I'm not hungry. So sometimes I just take a 30 minute lunch. Sometimes I take the hour lunch, but I take that break time and then I go back to work. And doing that has been able to help me stay much more focused and doing things like that, which when I'm more focused, it's, it's bad to say, but it's a good distraction. You know, focusing on something and having to a schedule is helping me feel a little bit better about myself and feel like I am getting stuff accomplished when normally I wouldn't be. So now the next thing I have here is try something new for fighting urges. And so why did I write fighting urges? Anyway, try something new. Try to pick up a new hobby. Try to do something free in your off time because I, I must have like meant something else when I wrote that. Sometimes I don't understand my own notes. I'm just like, why did I write that? Anyway, sometimes when we're depressed, things that brought us the most joy just don't anymore. And they bring us down. I was having that when I had probably one of the worst reading slums, which was uh, 2019. I barely think I read anything in 2019, which is very sad for me. And sadly to say, I didn't complete the reading challenge that I wanted to in... May. I don't know why I couldn't think of the month. Wow. Genius, Michelle. Genius. But I'm able to find things again that I used to not be able to find joy in. So try things out of your comfort zone and try to do things that you might not have tried before. Something else I've been trying to do, but it's a little hard with how things are right now is I want to get back into skating. Uh, but it's been a hard time for me to try to find skates because I, I actually have pretty big feet because I'm a pretty big girl. So that being said, though, Try finding something new so you're not dwelling. Because that was something else I would do. When I would be really upset and I would just, nothing would bring me joy. My hobbies that brought me so much joy, my writing, my stuff, just felt like nothing. I, I kept getting in this pit. So trying to do something new, trying out a new hobby, even if it's something you didn't think you'd like, is always worth trying. Now, with that being said, the catalyst of that, please don't go broke trying to try a new hobby. I've known people who do this to fight up their depression. And it usually never ends well because they will, like, spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars on stuff for a new hobby and then realize they don't like it and then are surprised they can't, like, you know, return the supplies they got or the things they got. And so that's why, like, you know, dip your toe in it, see things. Maybe if something you didn't like before, try, try giving it a shot. But the problem here is you have to give it an honest shot. If you're going into it with a very, and I'm not saying with a, like, falsehood of, like, this is going to be so amazing and, oh, my God, I'm going to have a new hobby. That's going to be, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. No. Okay? Be realistic but not pessimistic about it. You need to make sure that you're not, like, if you're in a mood where you're just like, well... Why should I even try? Like, it's not going to bring me joy because nothing brings me joy because everything is depressing. We've had those thoughts, okay? I've had those thoughts. I'm sure you listening right now have had those thoughts. But you got to get out of your own head. It's hard. It's a challenge in its own right, and it feels like its own damn monster. But you have to give it an honest try or else you're not going to win. So the next thing I have is the one I already said, which was the brushing my teeth in the shower, you know, or finding other ways to kill two birds with one stone. Find things you can do that you can do all in one thing. Something I liked doing a lot, and this is not sponsored because you can use the Libby app and other things, but to help me stay motivated to put my laundry away, to do my dishes and do things that I really, really don't want to do, but I need to do, I've been listening to audiobooks. And so because of that, I feel like I'm still getting something out of it or listening to podcasts too. That, that works too. I've been really into some podcasts on Twitch, which I usually don't do. But that being said, with all of that, because of that, it's helping me 
do more things at once so I feel like I'm getting more done. You know, yeah, I'm just doing the dishes, which is a monotonous task. Yeah, I'm just folding and putting on my laundry. Yeah, I'm just, you know, cleaning my animals' cages, you know, blah, 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 blah. But it's getting more things done at one time so that way I feel like I am accomplishing more. So my last thing, okay, my last big thing is and this this is also a hard one and a lot of people out there are going to you know comment that they don't have this but we do we do out there okay you need to try to talk to somebody and by that i don't mean you know dming somebody or or grossly venting because there's a big difference between like genuinely talking about something and venting because something is irritating but the best thing I can say that's helped me is being able to talk to somebody on the phone. Actually hearing a voice respond to my questions has helped me so much. And it's so hard sometimes. It's so hard sometimes, especially when you don't want to burden people. It's really hard for me to ask for help for things. But just having a nice distraction of being able to talk to my friends on Discord sometimes, being able to do live streams with people, being able to do things like that, and there are ways for people to do that all the time. It's not because because people say that like, oh, you're popular. You have this and that. There's ways to do it all over the place. You don't have to have a following. You don't have to do that. There are Discord servers. There are groups. There are chats. There are random things on, you know, websites where like uh, another good one is like, you know, D&D. And uh, I think it's Roll20 where you can like find people online to, you know, chat with, talk to, do games with, learn things. And having that interaction, because a lot of us can't be, you know, person to person right now, that helps a lot. It really, really does, because sometimes we just need to get out of our own heads and hear somebody else's voice when we talk to the ether. And so those are my five things. This is very long and it's going to be fun to edit, but that's how I fight the big sad. And again, doesn't make it go away, but it does help. Le- it does. It does weaken it. And it does help me get through it. And so obviously, though, if it is seriously severe and you can, please do contact a doctor. I will do my best to have, like, you know, important links and, like, hotlines and stuff in my description down below. Because I feel like when you make videos like this, you should have those resources out there. And so this is normally where I would do my little shell of, like, you know, blah, 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 blah. But I don't want to. If you guys want to follow me more, I do have my link tree link down below. And as always, guys... I want to thank my amazing Patreon patrons, and I'll see you next time. Bye.